out on the phone with me right now. I have a super talented brother, producer, artist, um, just all around hip hop dude, just making major moves in the industry all around the world. Kavast. What's going on, man? It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well, man. Thank you for agreeing to come on the show. It's definitely our honor to have you on here. A producer, I guess she saw something online about you, and she wrote it to me. Said you need to check this dude out. And as I saw the body of work, I was definitely impressed, man. How long you been in the game? Cause it seems like you got like this huge body of work. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I've been very fortunate, and very blessed. I actually got signed in the industry when I was 16. So I've been definitely doing it over 10 years now. It, it's been like you know, it's like you know, you build it brick by brick. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, it started off with uh, getting a record deal. And I recorded a full album And I was working with De La Soul at the time This was like 2001, 2002 Okay I think the, the record was a, a bit ahead of its time For that moment mm-hmm. and era And then it was like One of those things where it's like uh, The label ended up going bankrupt So the album never came out But okay. the management team that I had at the time Was like, you know You wrote all these songs And they're like progressive And a little bit of rock Some of it's hip hop Some of it's R&B Like so Why don't you like until we figure out your situation as an artist, why don't you like write and produce for an R&B group on Monday, and work with a pop artist on Wednesday, and a rock band on Friday? So it's like I just started mm-hmm. to just like go across the map, and, and for me it was like one of those things. Like one of my big inspirations as a producer is Quincy Jones and Rick Rubin. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, it's like those cats have transcended genre transcended media you know with Quincy just starting Vibe being mm-hmm. a producer on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and doing movie scores so I was like there's no limit there's no ceilings you know mm-hmm. and, and I mean like your body of work includes like working with some major artists and producing um, music for for sitcoms and, and, and television shows and producing music for uh, video games yeah did I read that right that's amazing yeah yeah, I ended up having some songs in um, uh, EA Sports Madden video game. The funny thing is, is I actually just did a campaign with Odell Beckham Jr. from the New York Giants for Dunkin' Donuts. A word? Yeah, so like... Is we, that what that was? Cold Brew? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I peeped it. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that, that was... That's been kind of a crazy thing because it like dropped like a week and a half ago, like two weeks ago, I think now. Mm-hmm. And it went uh, a million views in one week. <laughs> um, and we got like all these different views and, and press and everything, and it was like, you know, it, it was a, uh, it was awesome. I mean, I'm I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from New York. I know it's like one of those things that to be able to work with such a talented uh, wide yes. receiver, you know, and then and then also like, okay, now we're gonna make a song, you know, like and do all these different things. So it was awesome to do that, and we had like mad similarities. Like he was on the cover of Madden NFL, and I had music in Madden NFL, so Dude. like. That was a pretty cool, like, common bond right then and there. That's um, dope. That's the way the world comes together sometimes, man. That's how. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. I, you've worked with artists like um, Taylor Swift, um, done remixes for Justin Timberlake, Chris Brown, um, Nick Cannon. Uh, the body of work is crazy. Yeah. So, so I also I also have several EPs. I actually just dropped a new album. It came out Friday. It's called And the Love Disrupt. Okay. Uh, this project I'm really proud of because what I wanted to do was create music that was a little bit more motivational and inspirational. Like it's like put a little more like self empowerment. And, you know, you got that job interview, you got that big day at work or whatever, you feel apt or, or for Odell, before you go out on the field, something to get you charged up, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so it's something like that to get you, like, really, really, like, do stuff to go out in the world and accomplish goals, dreams and everything. So it's like, had a really, like, positive message, but not feeling overtly positive. Like, you know, a lot of people, when they hear it, they're like, Oh wow! Like I thought that was like you were talking about a girl. I was like, nah, I was actually talking about your dreams. But yeah, mm, that's a girl. Nice. Yeah. How many instruments do you actually play? Uh, five. Play five, five instruments. Yeah, yeah. So drums, bass, guitar, keyboard, uh, and a little bit of saxophone. Okay, so you took like music lessons uh, coming up, or you just kind of developed the talent? You know what's crazy? My grandfather was like he was a beast. He played like, seven instruments Ooh. and. Uh, so it's like I think it's in my bloodline. Like I took mm-hmm. piano lessons for like two, three years, but it was like I think for me it was like once I understood like the concept, mm-hmm. it's like for me it's just like getting that music that's in my head out with that instrument. You know, like it's funny. I had a song. I had produced this artist in, in, in Paris named Billy Crawford, 
And I nice. did this whole song called Steamy Nice. You can check it out. It was like a, a big record for him. And I played the whole thing on the guitar, but I didn't know what I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean you didn't know the notes? You were just going off the yeah, tempo and the melody? Shit. Nice. So, so it's like, so like we, he's on tour. I'm showing the music director. He's like, oh, I love this song. Da, da, da. And he's like, what is that G that you're playing? And it's like funny because it's like, I knew chord progressions on the keyboard, but at that time, I didn't really know how to do tabs and everything on the guitar. Mm. But it was just like that whole thing of like, you know, just that expression of yourself and putting it, putting that intention and that energy into that the music and, 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 and the ideas, you know, like, nice. uh, you know, there's, there's reports that, you know, you, Jimi Hendrix played the, the, the guitar upside down. He was left-handed and he technically was wrong the way a guitar teacher would tell you how to play, but it was the emotion that came out. Emotion, wow. emotion always trumps technique. Wow, I did not know that. You're dropping gems on us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this, Kavas, like, what is that, is that, that your birth name, your given name, or does it have a, like, oh, yeah. a special it, meaning? It, 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 it's a short inversion of my full name, which is Kuvasi. So Kavaz, Kuvasi, my French Moroccan family background. Ah. Uh, and you know, like it's one of those things that it's like I just remember people like, yo, Kavaz, yeah, yo, Kavaz, yo, Kavaz. Hmm. And it's like you know, I, I didn't really have to uh, invent a rap name because my name that was so unique. Really like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, I just do that, you know. But so, you know, when you're coming up in the game, you get to, oh, you, you be like, you're trying to figure it out. Like, the okay, K-Book, you go da 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 Yeah. Wow, like... K ski, K jump, K bank. <laughs> Kavaz. Exactly. That's straight off your name. That's dope. Also read that you went on tour recently, or you've been on tour with a bunch of major artists. Can you talk to us oh, about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's like I, I've done, a, I've done a bunch of shows with different artists. Like I, when I came up in the game, I came up on the road with Mo Staff and Talib Kweli. Like nice. when I was like he's not even legal to be in the club. Like, but it was. Uh, <laughs> But recently, like I ended up doing like a couple dates with Lupe Fiasco, uh, nice. doing, doing his tour DJ stuff. So it's like I DJ. And well. you DJ? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a one man show, man. Gonna put us all out of business. Nah, nah. You know. <laughs> I ain't mad at you thing. though. <laughs> I love the hustle. One of those things I think that when you're a fan of hip hop, it's like you know, it's like my, I had uncles that came up and stuff like that that weren't really in the game, but were like, you know, mm -hmm. heads. So it's like, you know, you know the full colors of hip hop and you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, I would watch Wild Style. It's funny, like one of the key <laughs> tracks on on the, on the album is called The Wall. And it's actually inspired by the movie Star Wars, which okay. was like a graffiti movie from like the early 80s. And, I remember it. You know, was talking, you know, it's like basically like the concept of, of the, of, of the song it talks about how we're all chasing significance you know that that's just a human trait no matter who you are white black brown whatever but it's like you know as to be a graffiti artist in that time your whole goal was to get something on a piece that went all city that went from all the borough mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you put it on the train and it just it went from borough to borough went down that line and then you exactly. catch the next one and you put it on there and that one went from Brooklyn to Far Rock or whatever, you know. <laughs> exactly. So like your name was would bring out in all these boroughs. Mm -hmm. But then you had all the they had the mayor and you had all the police commissioners and chiefs mm -hmm. trying to stop these people so they could put a name for themselves by saying, I stopped this mm -hmm. this atrocity in their eyes, you know? So it's like they're all just trying to get a name for themselves. Wow. One by doing it, one by stopping it. So the wall is about like that whole idea of like, you know, you know, no matter what, we all trying to just feel important and have a have a have a, a place in this world. Like you think about hip hop. Hip hop started from the underprivileged and the deprived to have voice to a voice for the voiceless, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when people hear it, it just like, it, I, I think it, it'll really resonate with a lot of people, you know, like, because if you're going through a tough time, if you, if you feel it, it just feel good music at the same time, you know? And it's like, you can take from it whatever it means to you. 